excellent teacher status became effective in schools from September 2006 and helps experienced teachers remain in the classroom without having to take on managerial roles. In a First for Teachers TV, we have gained unique access to the National Assessment Agency's project director, Martin Flatman, to follow the half-day assessment process for excellent teachers. Jane Pittman has been teaching since 1988 and is currently curriculum manager for history. Chris Reen has been teaching science since he graduated in 1998. And Mimi Woods is head of French. Martin has agreed to observe these three teachers from Ratton School in Eastbourne to see if they meet the required criteria. A key part of the assessment process is Martin's observation of each candidate's lessons. Whoa, look at that! <laughs> now, here are the objectives. By the end of the lesson, hopefully, time willing, you'll know the term pathogen, be able to give examples of pathogens. Look, you see that quite a few times. Appreciate the size of pathogens, and I've got something quite, <laughs> it looks quite dodgy actually on the website. Um, know the time scale of microbial growth which is pretty riveting. Don't know where the sheets are at the moment, but I'm sure I'll find them in a minute. And begin to understand about the transmission of pathogens. Um, this 18th century kit was useful for drilling a hole in the patient's skull. Oh. Sort of let things out. Does anybody know what that's called? Yes? It's brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, could be. It begins with T and ends in repanning. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Any aspiring candidate's application must be endorsed by their school's head teacher. Sir Ratton's David Linsell has joined Martin to listen to his feedback on Chris's science lesson from earlier that day. It's quite useful that we're doing about um, diseases and things because I am a poorly bunny at the moment. So my throat, I'm suffering with my throat. I'm suffering with my throat. It's, wor it's worse than that. Oh. <laughs> Not that bad. Okay, now, there are some diseases you can't catch, but you have them. And we did that in the B1 topic, if you remember, that you actually did quite well in, um, that you can have things from the start. Can anybody remember the names of the genetic diseases that was in that module? Oh, look! A million. I see your hands. Look. Don't say anything, sorry. Yeah. Huntington's. Huntington's disease. Fantastic. And... <laughs> and cystic fibrosis as well. If you'd have said CF, you'd have got away with it. I thought your introduction to the whole of the new unit was quite superb. You'll know the term pathogen, be able to give examples of pathogens. Look. It was skillful because you, you introduced new language um, very carefully and explained very fully the new words that were coming through. Your board work was good, you had PowerPoint, you used many, many different techniques um, just to capture their interest. Strong sense of humour. Um, well, that's what I rely on. <laughs> well, you, well, we'll come back to that, Chris. Uh, it was written in 1570 and it's 20 metres long. They must have been really ill. And there are over 700 remedies on there, look at that. Many diseases. Uh, this lesson plan is well thought through. What I like about it is there's many examples, for example, of differentiation. There are clear learning objectives, there's clear desired outcomes, and it is planned very methodically and almost clinically. But when you deliver the lesson, it wasn't clinical, it was, it was actually creative and imaginative. Yeah. The other aspect of the practical experiment, there was a lovely element of mystery and what is actually going on here and, and suddenly the mystery um, unfolded and um, you know, the light dawned and, that, and that, was, that was very good. One or two points for development that did concern me. Pupils were quite noisy throughout, yeah. sometimes I would judge to be positively noisy, uh, excitement and along the topic. There are other occasions when youngsters weren't with you and they were talking about other things and planning what was going to go on tonight, etc., etc. Yeah, I think on the whole, they are, you know, they are a very bubbly, very bubbly group, mm. and you know, they are like that most yeah. of the time. Yes, and that's as hard, if not yeah. harder, to yeah. control and maintain than a, yes. <laughs> a group who are less well behaved. Summary, however, 
a thorough, well-planned lesson, well-prepared lesson, an interesting lesson, in which pupils learned much uh, and deeply about microorganisms and their reproduction. So, do you think this teacher is a really good one? Yeah, he's my favourite teacher. Yeah, is he? Yeah, Why? Sir. He's just fun to be with. How he teaches, he's yeah. funny as well. Yeah. So. But are you learning? Yeah. I mean, I like fun, but I don't always learn when I have fun. Yeah, my grades are getting better as well. They are? Yeah. Good. Martin then observes Jane's history lesson. Can you see how Martin Luther King eventually would be moved to speak out against that? Jane, I wonder if we could talk about your um, lesson on um, changing public opinion in 1968. There were a number of strengths. Um, but before I launch in and, and give you what I've written down here, tell me what you thought were the strengths. I think um, quite a lot of the children actively participated, not yes. all of them, but a number of them. Yes. I think the responses they gave were quite thoughtful. The feeling that they might not actually win the war and that they aren't in as control as they thought they would be. Excellent point, well done. Does anyone know what Tet is? Anyone remember? I have mentioned it once, I think, but I wouldn't expect you necessarily to remember. Go on, then, you have a go. Um, wasn't that where all the North Vietnam attacked the South Vietnam? That is once? what happened on the Tet Offensive. Yeah, that's excellent. You know There's some things that you've, you've clearly taken for granted, uh, or, or to your credit to you. Um, the behaviour of the pupils was quite exemplary. Yeah, they are. You had their attention all the time. Uh, secondly, your questioning. You ensured that a variety of children um, were given the opportunity to give their answer. I mean, when they gave you an answer, you probed a little deeper to assess whether they were really understanding. What, th what actually did happen to black soldiers in Vietnam? Black soldiers were made to go and fight in the front rows, so they got killed first, but um, instead of the white people. Yes, I think that did happen sometimes. Excellent. Can anyone think of the wider point about black soldiers in Vietnam? You brought in other matters. Clearly important matters to, to any lesson. Uh, matters of morality. You talked about suffering, yes? Um, you talked about um, <clears throat> Martin Luther King. You talked about the, the black soldiers going in at the front. I was also pleased to see the quality of the lesson material uh, and the exercises they were later to follow. Martin then observes Mimi's French lesson. Le salon. Numéro 3, le salon. Enjoyed your lesson very much this morning. How did you feel about it? Um, I, I was quite happy with it, actually. William, you viens de tenir son papier, George? The key strengths, I think, was the presentation that the, the children did, being able to talk about their homes with confidence um, from memory uh, on a topic that we've only been doing for two and a half weeks. Yes. And also, um, I'm quite pleased with the way they're able to spell easily. And mm -hmm. we use the French alphabet. Mm -hmm. A little disappointment mm -hmm. uh, for me mm -hmm. was that in that lesson I didn't see any ICT. Mm -hmm. Would it not have been enriched if you had uh, used some software or computer technology not particularly in this no. in this lesson no because this is a this was a reinforcement lesson of, of everything that we've done and they have had access to ict and also when they've done the prepared the presentation a lot of them have used ict for that uh, you're strong on rewarding mm. lots of praise mm. lots of affirmation fantastic mm. bravo mm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Many, many times uh, you said that. Mm. Uh, they understood that and they responded, they smiled, it, it mm. encouraged them, it motivated them to come out to the mm. front to present. Mm. Great strength. Yeah. Slight concern that um, the lesson plan um, was not detailed mm -hmm. and it possibly didn't do you justice. Mm -hmm. How do you mean? The lesson itself yes. was much, much better than that, you, what you had indicated on the lesson plan. Mm -hmm. I don't see the lesson plan as key to my to my lesson. It's something that's in the background, and if um, you know, I can make it more detailed. I could have spent a lot more time writing mm. more sorts of information that I don't need to write on it. Um, so I, I'm glad that the lesson flowed the way that it flowed. And um, as far as recording the levels, 
I know what their levels are, the children know their own levels, and the fact that I'm going to write it on another piece of paper, it's neither here nor there. Overall, that was a very good lesson. Uh, summed up with consistent in your approach, persistent in your pursuit of knowledge and understanding of people, <laughs> focused mm. and very thorough. In addition to the lesson observation, there are six standards each candidate must meet to an excellent degree. These are assessed by interview. So how will our teachers do? Jane, um, excellent results and outcomes is, is the first standard. Okay. You make a number of wonderful claims, uh, delightful to read. Uh, you say, for example, you have the highest residual scores in the whole school. Yeah, this refers to um, Year 11 classes, yeah. where the results in each subject are compared to one another. And, and the calculation is done as to how children perform in one subject compared to another. And last year, uh, in my Year 11 history group, the result came out at plus six, which means, in effect, one whole GCSE grade higher on average than they were achieving in other subjects. Uh, and for the boys, it was one and a, almost one and a half grades. For boys? Yes. That's so boys splendid. did particularly well. I need reassurance uh, from you that the pupils always respond really positively and really love your history. Year, in year nine, when they take their options, history has been the most popular option choice for probably five years now. So we've got 80 plus children opting for GCSE history year on year. Uh, they tell us that's because they enjoy the subject. They tell us it's because the work's differentiated um, successfully so they can all access the curriculum. They tell us it's because they enjoy the topic. They find history in itself interesting. But they tell us as well it's because mm. it's well taught right across the, the department. So what would you say is the key ingredient of your pupils gaining excellent results? I think I create a feeling that we're all in this together, that we've, we've got the same aims. Um, I don't think they see it as I've got a body of knowledge that I want to teach them. Why is he not going to stand for election? I hope they think that, you know, it's, in, it's enjoyable to be in this lesson, it's interesting to find out there are ways that I can contribute to what I'm learning. Um, so I do a lot of discussion work, a lot of trying to engage the children. Um, I think it's down, a lot of it is down to communication skills mm. and how you form a relationship with the classes mm. that you teach. Tell me about uh, the strengths of your subject knowledge and your specialist knowledge. Well, my subject and specialist knowledge are extremely good because I am bilingual. Le salon. Numéro 3, le salon. It's a, it's a huge advantage as far as teaching okay. is concerned mm -hmm. because both languages are so... Well, there are lots of similarities but lots of differences mm -hmm. and it's, it's key, actually, to teaching, to have a deep mm -hmm. understanding of, mm -hmm. of both and obviously mm -hmm. to feel secure when I teach, and mm. uh, which isn't something one always mm. finds. Mm. But I've set up a consortium across right. the um, local schools, specifically for MFL teachers and anybody else who's interested mm. to share good practice, to talk about good practice, to share resources, and also we can share speakers. Um, the other thing I'd quite like to do is to set up a, a local website because there are websites around the country that I've looked at and uh, mm. I'd quite like to set one up for MFL teachers. It can be a forum for discussion, yes. it can be a way of um, sp sharing assessment because I think there are too many, too many things that are done differently in different mm. schools mm. and uh, it's a way to sort of bring it to a focus. Tell me what you bring to the group, what, uh, you know, the strength of, um, what drives you to do it and, and what do you inject into the group or share with the group? Um, in interest, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very creative and I share a lot of resources with the group and, um, and I, I think it's key in, that we don't teach as a bubble, that we, we work as, as closely with other teachers as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm very easily bored and, and I think really that, that, that pupils would be extremely bored if you just textbook, bone mm -hmm. dry, bone dry, year mm -hmm. after year. So mm -hmm. I create a lot of my resources. <laughs> Mimi, um, we're looking now at um, excellent ability to plan, which mm -hmm. is standard three of the excellent teacher. Um, and I have some questions on your planning. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me, first of all, uh, the importance to you of preparing for lessons? All right, well, obviously, to me, preparing for a lesson is vital, but not from the paper exercise angle. Oh. I, I view planning from the child, the class I have in front of me, um, and not from my lesson plan, because with the language, I feel that I'd rather, if the situation allows or needs, 
that I develop a certain point within a lesson. I need to have the, the freedom to go off and follow a line that's appropriate with, with the pupils. Um, is it uh, the value of the lesson plan you are questioning or the value of the use of the lesson plan? Or I, I feel that the lesson plan has a value probably for new teachers who need to focus themselves on, on what they're doing and where they're going and right. probably for time management. But as far as I'm concerned, I will use it as a guideline and I will always allow myself the freedom to throw it out of the window if I want to. So what to you is the essence of excellent lesson planning? Excellent planning is, number one, the subject knowledge um, that I have and see whether what I've got planned is going to go down well. So I will not pitch my lesson necessarily to the middle of the class. I'll pitch it to the top and drag everybody along with, with right. that momentum. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a danger of, of creating a, a boring situation for, for children who've done something before who are or who are... Um, you know, gifted and talented, mm. so my pitching is always near the, the top and my expectations are very mm. high. Tell me about um, um, the planning of homework. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, often it's by, by outcome um, and my expectations, and I give them different styles of homework, which means then they can sort of maximise the potential that they have. Voilà ma maison. Voilà le garage. Voilà le porte de dente. A dot. La Sham, a gauche. I think La different Sham. styles of homework. Uh, I might say, look at this website and yes. have a go at these games, and it will be reinforcing things that we've done yes. on a particular topic. Standard four of the excellent teacher, which is excellent ability to teach, manage pupils, and maintain discipline. I think the essence of excellent teaching really is to, is to bring something of yourself into it. Um, I rely quite heavily on this and a personality and spark to, to get the kids inspired. And I think I do it really well. A disease-causing organism. Disease organism. And can you give me an example? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bacteria. Well done. Will you talk me through some of the uh, methodologies that you adopt in yes. your teaching with different pupils? Yes, um, you know, I, I do a lot of role play in my lessons, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of group work, individual work where they can, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, of, a lot of peer learning from that as well, which I, I found quite, quite interesting. What happens when you add iodine to starch? It goes black. It goes black, okay? Now, the person who had that to start off with, yes, that would go black. And nobody else's would have done, first of all. Let's just try this. So these haven't been infected. I'm just going to squidge some iodine in there. Okay, nothing. Okay, don't, there is a colour change, but it's the same colour as the ID. It's like a yellowy colour. Okay. Now, the person uh, who I infected, because I'm sure that she wouldn't have minded, was Rasheen. <laughs> it's about enthusing, it's about motivating, really. It's, it's bringing your subject to life. Tell me how you use, say, ICT okay. to really good effect and to promote sustained learning. Well, I use ICT myself as a teaching tool. I use a lot of PowerPoints, mm -hmm. some that are pre-made, but I make a lot of my own as well. And I try and encourage my students to do the same thing. There's uh, lots of food about, there's water, so it's like you. So basically, all living things need the same stuff. Final question in this uh, yes. session is about um, maintaining the respect of the pupils and maintain, maintaining your respect for the pupils and the discipline that yeah. follows. Um, What's the secret? I think, again, it's, it's enthusing. If you can enthuse the children that you're teaching, then they're going to want to learn, and they're going to want to behave themselves. First of all, let me ask you about the way you diagnose pupils' learning needs. How do you go about that? I feel with assessment, you know, being such an integral part of the teaching and learning process, it isn't just about having things written down all the time. It's not just about reports. It's not just about having written targets in, in the exercise books. The, the assessment happens all of the time. And you, you, can, you can obviously see a lot by, by the students in action and then build on that. ...to the one that I had. Look at this. We're going to have to sort of put a posy on the door and a cross or something. Diseased area. Can you show me any evidence today of your, your previous you know, assessments and evaluations of your own lessons or 
modules? Well, I do often jot things down. Mm -hmm. um, you don't often have time to do that, which mm -hmm. everyone will appreciate. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, if, if something has worked well or not so mm -hmm. well, you know, I just have a little notebook and I and I jot that down so I know how to improve next time. Really, is it not more important than that? It is more important than that. I think it's something about sharing good practice with yes. with your peers as well. Yes. You know, that, that that's just for yourself, yes. and and that's important. Yes. But you know. In, in departmental meetings and, and things, just sort of sharing ideas and saying what yes. about this and what about that. And the most important people that you learn from and can improve is, is, is the kids. Mm. Because they'll tell you whether they understand something or not and whether the lesson was good or crap. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and do you find it interesting? Yeah, it's more interesting with this and he has a way of getting our attention. Right, yes, you can see that. <laughs> um, what about the homework? Do you have much homework? We've been given a project to do, yes. which we've got over half term, luckily. Yes. It's where we go through different things. It's our physics project. Yes. Go over different things like why the dinosaurs became extinct and mm. things like that. Finally, uh, about you taking into um, consideration the school's wider targets and the recommendations from the most recent Ofsted report. Yes. Do you take those seriously into consideration in your teaching? Well, with school targets, you know, we, again, we have regular staff meetings, and mm -hmm. you know, this is sort of filtered mm -hmm. down to us, I will say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with the inspection evidence, there weren't any major concerns in the last report, so. Jane, the, uh, the sixth standard is his excellent ability to advise and support other teachers. Yes. You talk in your application form about your work with four NQTs. Would you like to tell me about that? Over the past three years, there have been four NQTs in the history department. Um, two of them have already gone on to promotion, and two are currently here. Um, so obviously I've, had, I've been a mentor to, for, to some of those individuals mm. um, and I think you know the main issue that's come out really is advice on classroom management and I think you know you'd expect that um, so what I've been working with with them um, about is classroom management strategies and things like that mm. so um, quite often I've used the idea of sort of modeling so I've said come and watch my lessons um, I'm not saying that no one ever misbehaves in my lessons, but you know the strategies for coping with that misbehaviour, what they mm. are, have a look at them, see which ones you think you could adapt mm. to use for yourself successfully. Mm. I mean, the good mm. thing is now that I feel that um, the people that I've been working with, you know, they are in, they're now able to offer me advice um, because people who are new in the profession, you know, have got great ideas and so on. And I think we see it very much. I see it very much as a sort of team exercise. Um, so yes, it's about helping other people, but in in, in return, you get help back. Could you give me any indication, uh, Jane, of how much time you spend on this um, coaching and mentoring compared with the rest of your working week? Um, I would say probably I would put aside definitely one session per week timetabled mm -hmm. for mentoring mm -hmm. and then probably two, two hours on top of that. Yeah. It's quite difficult to fit everything in because I work part-time. I work on a 0.8 contract, um, so there are even, there's even less days to contract yes. everything into. Um, well, I would say fine. We welcome excellent teachers who are part-time. That, that's great that's because I know, you know, I think part-time teachers often get overlooked, don't they? So, what did our potential candidates feel about the half-day assessment process and Martin's observations? I'm much, I'm much more a people person than a form-filling person. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, mm. that's where my strengths lie, I think. Mm. As an interview process, it's, uh, it's very interesting and, and very rigorous. I like the fact that it covers all different aspects, including the classroom observation, I think, because, you know, obviously what goes on in the classroom is very important. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a rigorous procedure that you, um, you'd have to take seriously, but I think it's a fair procedure that gives you a chance to show your strengths in lots of areas. Uh, the Excellent Teacher Scheme is something that I would think about doing in the very near future and because it's something you do on the job as you like within the classroom then it's something that I would definitely want to go for because it means that you can stay in the classroom and, and teach and do what you're good at. At the end of the half day observation, Martin reveals his findings and whether excellent teacher status has been met. Criteria for the excellent teacher has not been met overall. However, there are significant strengths and some significant weaknesses. Tremendous strength in the results that the pupils of these teachers have attained. Pupils have, um, have done their teachers proud with it.
Second strength is actually the second standard. Um, it's the subject knowledge and expertise of the teachers. Up to date and excellent in their subject knowledge and expertise. When it comes to the third standard, um, there, there's some work to do here. The lesson planning is good, it's not excellent. And it's so important that the planning of the full range of ability is high on the agenda in yeah. any lesson. The teaching and managing and discipline is also a little bit on the cusp here. The weaker area in assessment and evaluation is that there was little evidence of teachers consistently and critically evaluating their own lessons. And the last standard done absolutely splendid. There's clearly a culture in this school of teachers, you know, supporting other teachers and sharing good practice. All the teachers that I have seen are good teachers. They're committed teachers. They're contributing much to the people and they're a credit to your school. More detailed information and links to the Excellent Teacher Scheme can be found on the Teachers TV website at www.teachers.tv.